then dr dheeraj so this is a 3 year old uh, boy who presented with uh, vomiting for 2 days with vomiting is forceful with retching and abdominal pain and on his day the child has been doing uh, this uh, recurrently uh, most of the time it is food uh, matter which is uh, vomited out but on a couple of occasions the parents report that the vomit has been greenish and once they report the vomit has to be blood tinged so again my question is whether you are dealing with uh, something functional what we call is a cyclic vomiting syndrome or gastroesophageal reflux or are we dealing with an organic cause here and if are there any red flag signs here? duodenal ulcer organic cause can be both organic most probably blood organic cause organic organic weight gain is there okay organic or they want to know about the weight gain gr is another possibility uh, written by one of the participants functional so uh, again all kind of answers are coming in uh, dr dheeraj sir so uh, i would say that uh, before labeling uh, although we have a uh, whole variety of functional gastrointestinal disorders but before labeling any child as having a functional disorder we must be very careful and red flag sign should not be missed here the most important red flag sign is presence of bile in the blood remember even a single episode of bilious vomiting cannot be ignored it has to be organic when whenever there is bilious vomiting it has to be uh, organic cause Uh, re- regarding blood it may be a bit tricky because blood tinge vomitus can occur just because of a small tear but we call it a mallory wish tear which may happen after forceful vomiting even in cyclical vomiting syndrome or it may happen uh, because of the gastroesophageal reflux and uh, reflux esophagitis that is also classified as one of the functional gi disorder so blood is still okay but the greenish vomiting or bilious vomiting cannot happen in a functional gastrointestinal disorder so it is definitely organic here the red flag sign is one is bile and another red flag sign which is there is blood uh, although blood may still be there in the functional vomitus but it uh, needs careful evaluation you need to have other uh, red flag signs assessed in this child if there is growth failure if there is localized abdominal pain uh, and if there is presence of anemia or any other systemic findings like uh, say hepatosplenomegaly so you need to see for everything before you label any diagnosis as being functional in origin so here i would say it is uh, it is organic so, uh, coming to if we have an organic cause the child is having recurrent vomitings uh, and uh, we have not commented on failure to thrive but if there is some uh, poor weight gain also so what could be the possible differential diagnosis with this presentation recurrent vomiting in a child along with abdominal pain we have had covered partly uh, in one of the cases where the predominant manifestation was vomit uh, abdominal pain and vomiting was a presentation along with the abdominal pain here it's just the reverse vomiting is the major symptom and abdominal pain also happens along with vomiting sometimes well we have the answers coming in ckd congenital pyloric stenosis uh, chps uh, see this is a 3 year old male child with vomiting recurrent past episode mostly food keep that in mind uh, and uh, congenital pyloric stenosis appears or presents uh, within the first 2 weeks uh, of life or maybe up to 4 weeks of life duodenal ulcer uh, there is no uh, yes pain abdomen but no bleed or uh, only mostly food greenish blood tinge ones okay so mal rotation valvulus possibility yes okay so over to you dheeraj sir so i would say that most of the cases which i have seen uh, with this presentation they had malnutrition and valvulus so uh, especially if there is bilious vomiting because the valvulus can happen uh, at different sites it could be gastric valvulus which will result in 
just uh, non bilious vomiting and sometimes blood tinge and then if uh, the obstruction happens because mal rotation the obstruction can happen at various levels depending on the site of rotation so bilious vomiting can also occasionally happen so uh, that remains in the child with the recurrent uh, vomiting like this uh you have to rule out mal rotation especially with the growth failure and remember mal rotation is a disease which can present at any uh time in childhood and even reported in adults whereas idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric stenosis it's a disease disorder of infancy if not diagnosed in the first month it will definitely be diagnosed a little bit later than that and it will never have bilious vomiting so that is the most important diagnosis and then uh, sometimes you can have uh, rather than duodenal ulcer which will not uh, result in uh, forceful vomiting although duodenal ulcer will cause abdominal pain and uh, um, blood tinged vomitus but it will not result in bilious vomiting and obstruction but yes duodenal webs can lead to this kind of presenting an obstruction of at the level of duodenum distal to the ampulla of wetter or at the level of ampulla of wetter can lead to this kind of presentation and most often uh, the uh, cause of obstruction could be either external or internal webs metabolic diseases are important uh, here as against the abdominal pain here there could be inborn error of metabolism or some somebody said ckd yes ckd can cause this kind of presentation with only recurrent vomiting and abdominal pain then chronic pancreatitis although abdominal pain is only an adjunct symptom but you can have uh, chronic pancreatitis or recurrent pancreatitis uh, behaving like this so serum amylase and serum lipase would definitely be a part of work up of this patient similar uh, thing with cholelithiasis it is again uh, uh, disease which can present predominantly with vomiting recently in the ward only we had a child who presented mainly with vomiting and less with abdominal pain probably that child was intellectually impaired so he did not complain abdominal pain presented mainly with vomiting and the diagnosis was cholelithiasis a uh, cow's uh, milk protein allergy can also present with this uh, feature uh, with vomiting abdominal pain and it can result in blood tinge vomitus and forceful vomiting itself can sometimes leads to bile presence of bile in the vomitus so these are all differential diagnoses which comes to my mind when the child has this kind of presentation but in my experience i have seen most of the cases being diagnosed as mal rotation in volvulus right from my residency days and occasional cases of cholelithiasis as i said recently we had this kind of presentation in a child who diagnosed later to be cholelithiasis well uh, thank you dr dheeraj i think uh, we will have uh, just one or two minutes more for any questions in the chat box are welcome for next two minutes or so uh, dr dheeraj it's a rapid uh, fire now can duodenal atresia present with similar complaints as in the last case probably they are asked duodenal atresia if there is a total atresia of the duodenum it will present in the neonatal uh, period alone it cannot the child cannot survive till 3 years of age having duodenal atresia that's a complete uh, question yeah can it be sphincter of body dysfunction uh, just having a functional dysfunction of the sphincter of body is again unlikely to have this kind of presentation with the uh, bilious vomiting and uh, sometimes even blood in the vomitus what is the role of antispasmodic in functional abdominal pain i think you have already specified that yeah uh, yes functional abdominal pain uh, acute uh, in the chronic uh, abdominal pain uh, it's a different uh, ball game because you may need to break the cycle of spasm and may need to prescribe but in acute uh, presentation antispasmodic drugs have very little role in chronic management yes there is some role which is proved from the studies okay so since there are no more uh, questions are coming up um, thank you dr dheeraj it was wonderful having you today on board and you gave a very good glimpse with such an, a wide variety of um, cases that included abdominal pain constipation malabsorption chronic diarrhea chronic diarrhea portal hypertension varices liver failure acute chronic acute hepatic failure gi bleed vomiting gr i think that's fantastic combining uh, or uh, in crisply crisply describing in just two hours so thank you very much and um, more sessions by dr dheeraj are available in the e module again for the subscription uh, just watch the module after this so i thank dr dheeraj i thank you all for joining us today and please join uh, next month a uh, third or fourth uh, sunday we will inform you for the next chat show with the uh, pg module and with diginal thank you